Okay, so here we are. This is Imaginary, and to get going, we'll go and click begin there. So we were, hello, here we go. So you'll be able to go into this once you've gone and sort out your license key. So it's a license key tab here. So I'm actually just looking through my webcam now, and it's also a good way to show you how we can switch between different cameras. So I can actually click here and go to device one, which is on my Mac over here. So I just want to show you what I'm doing, my setup here. So what I'm doing is I'm basically using this webcam here um, to show you everything. Okay, so this is uh, another camera I'm using, plus it's a good way of allowing me to show you the different ways of switching cameras as well. Anyway, I'm going to show you a quick way around the interface. So first of all, we've got these two windows here. We can go and click full screen over there, or we can hit F a few times there and we can go and change the size of the screen. So why two windows sign, why? Well, basically to get this as large as possible and especially for performance when the whole crew is looking at this, you know, actors and directors and all that kind of thing, it's very important to have the screen as large as possible, but then you also need to go and find the controls. And if you ever lose this screen down here, so, so it's, it's off there, it's behind the screen, think, oh, where's it gone? Just hit spacebar, there we go, and hit it again and I'll center down there. So basically you can never lose that other one, so just hit space bar, so really useful. So you may have noticed, in fact I'll just hit F there, you've got a few bits of information around the screen here, so things like, you've got things like live and the plate here, because obviously when we're doing visual effects it's very important to line these things up optically, so what we do is we have the live, so what you can do is you can actually go and see all these things here, they kind of copy down here, so you can go and set the height here, and so obviously if the camera's lower, this ground plane grid here will look like it's closer to the floor. And then you've also got things like tilt, roll, and angle, and all these things are recorded and, uh, and automatically loaded when you, um, when you play things back. You can do tilt, angle, roll, angle, so you could get an inclinometer out, or you can go and use the Imagine smartphone app there. There we go. And it's away there, and what it will do is that will go, and obviously normally you mount this to your camera, and what you could do is you can put that on top of the camera and then it'll automatically send these details from the uh, camera to Imagine. But just remember, it runs off Bluetooth, so all Bluetooth has a limit of 10 meters of range. But you typically want to be plugged in right next to the camera anyway. So I'm just going to go and um, I'll lock that there and I think I will just uh, come out of it there. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I'm just override the tilt so we just got nice and clean. If you want to hide this, by the way, you can go and press J on the keyboard. I can't remember all these keyboard shortcuts, but what you can do is go to the display tab and then things like um, things here like show the grid, there we go, J. You can go and toggle all the overlays off to give like a nice smooth uh, clean output there. So you can press O and all the shortcuts are right next to the scene there. So anyway, there we go. Um, if you go and press, um, let's have a look here. We can go and switch the layering order. So this is the background. So this is the default background. We can press X to go in and change those things there. And there we go. So we can do that. We can also do some, some keying. So um, good thing is if you're practicing with a webcam, you might not have a green screen or a blue screen, but you might have a green or a blue object. So I've got a blue object here. I'll just press J to hide the grid. So what I can do is I can go and uh, basically go to the keying tab here and then I can go to basically pick a pixel or I can press P, P for pick a pixel and then I can go and click a blue there and there we go it's gone invisible and then we can go and tidy up the key a little bit if you can notice some of the background behind me has gone a little bit there so what we can do is typically if you tighten up the value and tighten up the saturation there we go and then we can have <laughs> you can see the box where there's a nice if we press E by the way you can quickly go between what's keyed and what's normal. So there we go. You can see that down here, you've basically got the hard limit and then you've got the soft limit. And then you kind of got like this like graduation between them. So basically this is the soft limit, this is the hard limit. And then you basically just want to practice around with a few items, get something blue. I'll just press L to reset the key here. And then, so that was blue. And then perhaps if you have something, so what you can do is you can get something green, say something like this here. Uh, or it could be anything, maybe even like a shampoo bottle is actually quite a good one. So I'm going to hit P, there we go. And then we have a good green screen key there. And we will just tighten up that key there. Okay, so there we go. So this is 
a green a green screen key there, so I have to forgive my webcam. Normally we work with red scenario Alexis where they you know, have a, fo a focus pull on there. So basically, there we go, that's, and I'll just press E again. And it's also a good way of figuring out your lighting, for example, there's a green spill on my face here. There we go, so there's quite a bit of green spill, and you can see it going invisible. But if I were to turn it away, then it's a very good way of setting up your lighting there. So green. There we go. So basically, that's a really good way of doing it. Also, you've got that was chroma key, and you have got luma key here. So I may go a um, I may go a little bit invisible on the next part. So for example, I'm going to go and press P again for pick a pixel. I'm going to click the white of my shirt, and there we go. Everything that's white is gone. I got fairly decent teeth there, I think, and a sweaty forehead. So um, basically, that'll show you how you can do a luminance key, and you can expand that. There we go, and I'll reset the key, and then I'll press P again, and then I will go and cut the dark part of my shirt, and anything dark that's in the scene will go, uh, will be keyed there. And then you can go and play around with the hard and soft limits again. So it's just a really good idea, is to generally just go and get a few items around your house, are like white, black, blue, or green, and then you can just see, and you can really experiment with what works and such. People despill here, so if you go despill active, it'll automatically so that so I mean what you can see here is why go so what you can actually do there is you can actually eliminate some of the spill basically replace green with grey or blue with grey or whatever you've done so it's actually quite uh, effective and quick uh, despill just give you a cleaner result in camera there we go and keep that off and then you've got loads of other controls like you can go and erode as you would do normally, you can do a matte blur, uh, dilate and such. So all these kind of edge controls here. So there's something else that's very useful, especially for doing like before and after shots. You've got something called match mode. So if I press E and turn off there. So what it does, especially if you're trying to line up, say, a before and after shot, it'll just fade constantly between your background and your foreground. And then it's just a really good way of really speeding up that process of lining something up. Okay, uh, and you can also go and change the exposures and such. This is actually really good for when. Sorry, let's change this. So that's for the background. So you've got the foreground. It's, it's something that's quite dark in the scene, or if you think there's someone's reflection in a, a shot, you can actually go and brighten up, and let's see if there's something lurking in the shadows there, something we might have to remove in visual effects later on. So you can go and change those, and the shortcuts for those are less than and greater than on the keyboard. And if I can, by the way, we've got masking. So basically, if I start doing some right clicks, there we go. And I can go and move these points around. It's always six points, by the way. Why six, and Why six? Well, in a live setting, that is all you need. And if you start trying to click around, you know, bits of hair and all that kind of thing, in real terms, you know, when you're in a live setting, your actor's going to move and that's going to disrupt all that. So six points, I found, has been enough every single time. So basically, if we can do that, we can press O so we can get a clean output. And you could even, if you wanted, go and blur that edge there so you have um, a composite there. Okay, obviously, I'm not trying to composite any real visual effects here. So there we go, we have that. And to get out of these, by the way, you can go and right-click. There we go. I'll click reset exposures as well. And the next thing we've got is transform. So we can move me around with these sliders here. Uh, you can obviously do rotation and scale. There we go, so I can all Batman. Um, so I'll show, so you can scale here. And basically I just want to show a more easy way of doing that is by pressing move mouse with the image. And then you can just move it around with your image there. And then you can press T to reset that. And also you can press minus and plus on the keyboard, very useful, and you can press 6 and 7 to rotate by 5 degrees at a time. And then you can also scale the background as well. And you can do other things in here like scaling the distance, but I guess that's more of an advanced feature really. So I'm going to reset all of those. Uh, record, so this is um, it's quite easy to do. So all I need to do is I can go over here, I can press record, or I can hit R. So there we go, so I can record myself here. Um, yeah, that's fine. And then I can go and if I want to go and load that, 
So I'm just going to show you just a quick split screen here. So here I am, if I press quick load K, there we go, I've, lo I've loaded the plate up straight away. So I can go, a bit tricky there, uh, so I can go in and, um, uh, yeah, I can, I can go and quick load. So that's very good if you're doing, say, a crab replacement, and then we can go and change that. Oh, by the way, if you want to change the plate manually, by the way, or you can change the record directory there. Maximum frame, I've set mine at 50 frames per second. You can press E, by the way, E is a simple recording mode, and that just turns off all the features, and it's just good really for looking at a live feed again. So you can go and click plate here. So it's basically dot movs. Um, I'll show you this here. So here's a, a something I'm showing for an actor. This is some, um, a, a standing graphic for something I'm doing. If I press X to reveal this, here we go, and I can go and key out a black background, can't I? There we go. So and then I go in. Press minus on the keyboard, then I can put that wherever I want, and then I can show it to actors, maybe show them in the scene as well. I just wanted to show that yes, that can be keyed much more nicely. Okay, and then we've got the camera and the app here. This is basically where you can um, you can use Bluetooth Classic if that's if you're on um, if, that, if that's correct for you. Go through different devices and you can set the capture frame rate and um, frame size here. Display, this is, in fact, I'll just turn it off, it's a bit distracting, isn't it? You've got all our different options here where we can go and um, we can do a few things here with, you know, we can draw off. So now I can draw on the screen. Very nice. I can even go and draw some lines, line measurement tool. Just basically click once, click twice, and we can get the length in pixels, which is very uh, useful sometimes, and also the angle between them as well. One more thing here I want to point out is you've got these different things like changing the diet, the, um, the speed. So if I go and, uh, so at the moment we're running quite quickly here, we're running at about, I don't know, about 20 frames per second here, 40 frames per second. So if that's not going quick enough, what I can do is I can press 1, 2, 3 or 4. And what that will do is, it'll, you can actually see the, the effect here, one, two, three, and four. You can press these buttons here. And what that does is, if you've got a very heavy scene or you know things aren't um, running as quickly as you'd like them to, then you can basically change the resolution. And that will make, allow things to run uh, more quickly. And you can see the size of the fonts changing here. So probably when you lower down, you might want to press O to toggle the overlay off there. Okay, so oh yeah, one final thing. I'd like to, to, to show, hello Ian. Um, so one th my final thing I'd like to show you is um, when it says this thing about, uh, some people have mentioned that why, why is the interface all white? Uh, what's the deal with that? Well basically when you're outside and you have a laptop and it's in the sunshine, if you had like a dark black interface, like a lot of our software has quite a dark interface, if you have a dark interface in the sunshine you just can't see it. So that is why I'm sticking with a white one there or a light one there. Just have a practice, make sure you try and get as much practice in as possible, just use things around the house, make things little Lego men and, and, and line up perspectives and, and such. Um, ideally, ideally you want to go in and uh, obviously connect this to a camera when you get your capture device, you know, this thing here. So you want to get on that as quickly as possible. One more thing I will show you. So I'd like to show you just one more thing and that is the marker free background tracking for tripod camera movement. So, it's basically it's great for if you have to if you've got a camera on a tripod and you have to pan tilt, which is most VFX movement. Um, if you want to do three D camera movement, there is some bits of hardware and software that can do that, but they effectively require you to put a, uh, a motion capture rig around your shot. And I don't know anyone who puts a motion capture rig around their shot. And don't forget you have to remove all that rigging and all the cameras afterwards. But we can get something that works almost as well for most situations. And all you need is your phone. And what that is, is if I go and to put the uh, Imagine I app on the uh, phone here, we connect through Bluetooth. And what I can do is I'm going to go and put this on top of the camera now. So here we go. And you have to forgive me, I have a wobbly desk here, which is why it seems to be bouncing around a bit. So let's imagine I'm going to do a mask here. In the, uh, the shot here, we've got um, a mad background there. So what we have is... Um, you can think right we've spent a lot of time setting up this uh, this shot here and we want to have a bit of a pan in there so we've masked on that acting nicely but then when we go and do a pan whoops oh, obviously the mask 
the mass falls away and we think, well, have we got to go and start, you know, moving all these points around and, and all that. So what we what we can do instead is, let's put that back to the middle here. Um, so what we can do is we can activate something called move mask with the sensor. So we click that there. Sorry, forgive my wobbly desk here. So what happens now is when I move, ta -da, there we go. It tracks with the camera movement here. So there you go. That is something that's useful. And we can do that with the, um, the background as well. Okay, that's it. So that should be enough for you to have a fun with. So have lots of fun, have lots of practice, and, uh, and enjoy the magic feeling when you do get this out on set and everyone says, wow, I can't believe you can go and see it live. And I would never want to ever do visual effects again without this. Okay, have a great time.